Welcome to our video recorded service of worship for June 28th, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost at Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church of Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. It's good to be back with you all after two Sundays away. My thanks to Pastor Bill Petrie and to authorized lay worship leader Tom Booth for leading worship in my absence. In prayer today, we will be asking once again for God's blessing in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and also in the midst of discord in our nation on the matter of race. Our congregation council and staff are in preparation for a restart of physical worship. If the pandemic does not grow worse in a way that causes restrictions once again here in Pennsylvania, we hope to restart physical worship on Sunday, July 26th. That restart will include a worship service with word and sacrament, the sacrament of Holy Communion. There are many preparations that have to take place, and we will keep you informed of our progress and the latest details. As always, your support of the congregation's ministries is so important to us. Thank you for the contributions that we receive sent to the church office or dropped off here. Our second lesson for today from St. Paul's letter to the church at Rome will be the foundation for the sermon to come. Let's now prepare for worship through the prelude of the morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess, we confess that, that we, we do not trust your abundance, abundance and we, we deny your presence, presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We have used your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, Lead us, Lead us, so, so that, that we, we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. 
For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our confession offered, the forgiveness of God assured, we sing our gathering hymn, number 779, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. you.
to God and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with God's word for the day. The first reading is from Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading comes from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. And that you, having been set free from sin, have been slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. But just as you, you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. 
So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the 12, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. We are now together firmly into the church year season of Pentecost. It is a season filled with learning, as we have some of the best teaching lessons of the Bible made available to us through our lectionary week by week. Our second lesson for today, as with last week's, comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. And any time we consider this letter of Paul, we really should remember what might be the thesis statement of the entire letter from chapter 3. Paul writes, For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by His grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effective through faith. That is a powerful thesis. Paul then spends a few chapters of his letter unpacking the implications which arise from this thesis. Last week, for example, Paul pointed out that in our baptism we are to die to sinfulness, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. This is the already of whom we are called to be as the children of God. But in today's second lesson, as Paul continues with chapter 6, Paul is writing about how life does not often look like what God intends. For Paul, for us, sin is still an issue. As we do those things which are opposed to the will of God, that part where Paul said in his thesis, all have sinned, that hasn't changed. Humanity still struggles with it. Paul does a great job of making us aware of how human being behavior is sinful. Without that teaching, we might just plow through life with a mistaken sense that we are perfect and good just as we are, and we don't have to make any changes. Life without an awareness of our personal sinfulness could be a haughty, arrogant life, where we would go on day after day in a carefree style of stamping out God's will for our lives in favor of an extremely self-centered agenda. By making the reality of sin so vividly clear, Paul makes it so much tougher for us to ignore it. But ignorance of our sin is not the only problem. And Paul gets to another one in the lesson for today. It is the potential for so-called Christians to say that since we are forgiven, we don't have to worry about our sin anymore. Paul asked rhetorically, should we sin because we are no longer under law, but under grace? And then he answered his own question. 
by no means. And Paul makes it clear that our behavior indicates where our loyalties truly lie. In today's terms, just because we know we have auto insurance, do we no longer worry about wrecking the car time after time after time? Of course not. And why not? Because there's other kinds of suffering we might bring upon ourselves and others, but ultimately, our status as insured might be revoked. Our baptism in Christ is not supposed to function for us as one big insurance policy where we may continue to live while causing daily wreckage. We are instead supposed to be set free to live for what is God's will for ourselves and for the world. The fancy term for that is righteousness. In the summer of 2020, there are two matters within our society which are overwhelming all of the others, COVID-19 and racism. Paul's teaching in Romans has much to say to both of these. And if he were writing today, he might well have used both of these situations, both of these issues as illustrations as he wrote his sixth chapter. Is there sin involved with a pandemic, with a virus? Of course there is. In the midst of a pandemic, the will of God for human souls is that we would always act in ways which protect each other, according to our knowledge of how to do that in the moment, wearing masks, staying at a proper distance from one another, being thorough in our washing, doing what all of our medical professionals are doing day after day after day as a matter of course. This is what righteousness looks like in this moment. We can be a powerful, positive influence for good. But sin causes us to care for others less than we ought to and to not want to be bothered with things like masking, distancing, and best cleansing. And with respect to Paul's second point about wallowing in sin because we are already children of God, the absurd statements of some that because we are Christians, we will be protected from all of this, whatever we do, is simply sinfulness thinly disguised within lousy theology. Regarding racism, any sinfulness involved with that? Hugely so. And in 2020, I would hope that most people would be able to recognize by now that degrading or despising another of God's souls for any reason, but certainly over race, is simply sinful. We who are the baptized in Christ can be, we are called to be, a positive, powerful influence for good with this societal issue as well. But again, as with COVID, racism invites us to care less about others and to not want to be bothered with loving those whom we don't personally identify with. Once again, I sometimes see absurd statements about races preferred by God or races who are lesser in God's eyes. And all of it is sin, thinly disguised within lousy theology. Whether we can speak of COVID issues or race issues, it's time to stop wrecking our societal car and expecting divine insurance to bail us out. This summer of 2020 is unfortunately, in many ways, a miserable time. We are separated physically. We are separated emotionally. And human sin has taken all of this and made it ever so much worse. But there is also, folks, huge opportunity here in the summer of 2020 as well. Paul concluded our lesson for today by saying 
But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. Paul exhorts his readers to live set free from the power of sin and free to pursue God's goal of love for the world. We may be the examples of what Paul writes about, loving when and where others will not, with protection for COVID and with affirmation for all people. From living deeply within the sin which causes all of us to fall short of the glory of God, to living deeply a life of righteousness. This is the trajectory that St. Paul is writing about in his sixth chapter of his letter to the Romans. And this is the trajectory that St. Paul invites all of us to follow. May God's Holy Spirit guide us as we see sin for what it is and stop playing silly games with it in the name of personal advantage. May God bless us, renew us, and guide us toward the goal of sanctification as we move through the challenges of 2020. May it be so. Living together in trust and hope with believers around the world, we confess our common faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. great. Lord God, as we worship once again in this season of Pentecost, we ask your blessing for a world struggling in the midst of pandemic. 
We pray for wise choices in these moments, choices which protect one another and which will allow this pandemic to be more and more controlled. Guide those who research for a vaccine answer and for other therapeutic drugs as well. We pray, O oh God, for our society in a time of internal racial discord. Help us to find our way through the challenges of this moment to a moment in which all your people may embrace one another as sisters and brothers in Christ. We pray for all who are named on our prayer list and ask that you will bless each according to their needs. And as we have named these in our prayers this day, bless also those named before you now as well. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. May you share the peace of Christ with those you love as you worship this day. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 848. Give to our God immortal praise. is ended. Please enjoy our postlude prepared for this morning.
see. 